So hi, I'm Pete Lewis um, from Boulder, Colorado. I work with SparkFun Electronics, and we make open source hardware. So we make development tools for educating about how to make electronics of any sort. This first slide is someone you might recognize, uh, Wallace from Wallace and Gromit. He is definitely one of my heroes because he's such an awesome inventor. Thank you. Um, and I put this slide as my first slide because he represents quite a large uh, portion of our customer base. The, the people that are at home uh, inventing, coming up with whatever they want to better their own lives. So it's quite related to the open source, you know, sharing world that we're all here about. And uh, here, Wallace has his Portage shooter. Um, and it's something that he thought he needed for his household so that when he wakes up in the morning, the porch shoots across the living room, lands on his plate, and he's ready for breakfast. Um, so if Wallace was around when SparkFun, or if SparkFun was around for Wallace, he would hit up our website and he would buy all the wires and the technology he would need to make this porch shooter. Um, so I put him up there as an example. Um, This is one of our biggest sellers. Um, this is our SparkFun Inventors Kit. And so this is a, an education product that comes with an embedded system here, the Arduino. Um, and then it comes with a bunch of different sensors and uh, LEDs and output sources, so servos and motors. And it comes with a, a documentation booklet with uh, 14 lessons on how to use all these different things. So it's really designed for the beginner and someone that's never done electronics before. Um, and going through the lessons, you learn how to first blink an LED, which is kind of that first aha moment for a lot of engineers, um, just being able to get an LED to turn on and off. And then you move on to listening to light and, and having this microcontroller make a decision and say, OK, the lights are on, so I'm going to keep my LED off. But as soon as it gets dark in the room, I'll turn on the LED. And so the students get to learn how to plug in the hardware. And they also get to write the code that goes on to this, all in Arduino. And uh, this is kind of an important thing for us as inventors because it's, it's brought the level, the entry level, down so far. Um, there's a misconception, I think, that electronics are really difficult. And you sort of say, if I didn't study electronics in college, then I kind of missed that boat. And I am not going to be able to do that sort of thing. It's for geniuses in the, the basement, or maybe just Wallace, I don't, or his dog, Gromit, really. Um, but with this in Arduino, someone who's never done electronics before can come take a class with us or or even buy this and the documentation is really good so they can follow along on their own um, and, and get playing with electronics and start having some fun with projects and really harness their inner inventor. Um, here are some of our other products. Uh, on the top left we have a, one of our kits. This is um, a through hole kit so it comes with all the bits and pieces separated in a bag, and then the user gets to learn how to solder it all together. Um, we've done a lot of design work on this to make it easier for the beginners so that they, they're the, as successful as they can be. Um, and I actually brought this one along to show, see if it'll turn on for me on demo day. All right. So it's just dark enough in here. You can see the LEDs are flashing. So when you first get this kit and you solder all the parts together, so you can see on the back there, um, you have the game Simon Says. And this is a fun moment for a student when they f this is the first time they've played with electronics. They turn it on and the LEDs start flashing. And, and then they can start playing a game. So when I begin this, it, it tells me a pattern and I have to uh, follow the pattern. So it's a, kind of a memorization game. Um, and I messed up there, so you get a funny low tone. Um, but the beauty of this product is that 
and like most of our fruitable kits, is that they're reprogrammable. So not only is this a game that someone gets that they can play after they're done soldering, they can uh, plug this into their computer and start changing the code to the game so they can change the rules. And the first thing we usually show is how to make it more difficult so you can do it faster and you just change one little variable in the code there. Um, and you can also maybe make the game longer. So the, the default mode is just 13 steps. So once you get past 13, you've won. But you could extend that to 100 if you really wanted to challenge yourself. Um, but in addition to changing that code, you can actually write fresh new code and learn how to listen to a button and flash an LED and play with the buzzer on the back. I actually have a background as a musician, so the first thing that I wanted to do with this was change it into sort of a musical instrument. And I learned how to make buzz tones play a major scale. Um, and so it's exciting to think about people with different backgrounds getting into electronics and starting inventing with these things. So I'm going to keep moving along here. Um, on the right side of this slide, you have um, just an array of some of our other products. It's a sensors of different sorts. Some, most of these actually come with that inventor's kit I was talking about. But um, what I wanted to highlight was some of these red boards over here. These are, um, they're sensors as well, but this, this guy. battery seems to go out. Um, these guys have really small ICs on them, and um, those technologies, the one on the top there is an accelerometer, so it can sense motion and sense gravity, which is a really fun sense to have in a project. Um, I'm actually working on a new Simon that is based on tilt. So the, instead of pressing buttons, you hold it at an angle. Um, but what I wanted to highlight on these red boards to the right there is that that small technology is really inaccessible to someone at home because the solder connections are so small underneath that IC. But what we do at SparkFun is we take that small IC and we solder it down to a breakout board, a circuit board, which are those red squares. And then now the connections to those tiny little connections are available to the DIY electronic enthusiast. And they can solder to that in their garage and add it to their project. And then maybe later they want to utilize the tiny IC on its own within their project. But what we do is we take something that's normally inaccessible and make it very accessible to the home user. Um, this next project here, I just wanted to highlight that in addition to catering to the beginners, um, we also have some very advanced projects. Um, and this product here is called the Yo-Yo, and it's actually an interface for your Android device. So it allows you to use some of our sensors with your Android. And this is definitely something I wouldn't recommend to the beginner beginner uh, because you want to have some background in coding before you start writing an app for your Android. But I just wanted to highlight that we are also moving into some more advanced stuff as well. So here is the open source hardware logo. I just kind of wanted to put that on a big slide and highlight it for you. Um, the next few is about how we are open source. So what we are actually doing to open source our designs. Here's a shot of our website. So this is our music instrument shield. And this is a product that is basically the brains of a keyboard. In this tiny little IC there, That's a, that board is actually about the size of this Simon here. And what it does is um, it, it enables you to play around with the, the brain of a keyboard and make sounds. Um, and so we put this in an Arduino form factor as a shield and allows you to plug into that Arduino main board fairly quickly. Um, from the inventors kit we were talking about earlier, you could buy this as an add-on to that and start playing around with keyboard sounds. Um, but what really makes us open source is the bottom section of this website right here. There's some links to the actual source code for the hardware. Um, and a lot of closed source products will provide a PDF that describes the circuit. And in a way, it's open like they're showing it. But when you provide the actual source code, 
that is editable by the user. So you're giving them one more advantage to tweak it and do what they want to customize the product. So here I have a screenshot of the schematic for that product. Um, and this is, if it was in a PDF form, this would be kind of traditional. Um, you buy a, well, I don't know about a Sony CD player, but certain CD players out there, you could get the schematic for the inside of, of what's going on, but it's not an editable source file, so I wanted to highlight that here. Here's the actual board file. So this is the physical hardware that we sell. Um, and it's kind of hard to see with the, the light in here, but that's the actual physical metal, metal connections that are um, going to be making the circuit work. So with this source file using Eagle, the user can edit those, edit the hardware in whichever way they want and change the form factor to more better fit their project. So in addition to hobbyists and uh, enthusiasts using the source file and creating their own project, we also have competitors out there that are copying us. Um, on the right side of the screen, I have the SparkFun Pro Mini, which is a microcontroller that you can use in a variety of projects. On the left side, I have a competitor's version of, the, of our product. And you see they're very similar. Um, they've actually, in fact, copied our exact um, Eagle file and started their own production line. And we're totally OK with that, because as you can see, there's a couple differences. And by the time they've set up their production and are selling this one, we've, we've already added quite a few features to this uh, board on the right. And I highlighted one. You can see there's, there's extra breakout pins. And so that gives more functionality to our board. So we're constantly innovating the design. And there's always room for improvement. One other thing that's a little tougher to see, um, but the rings around the solder connections here are really small on there, and they're much larger on ours. And what that does is it exposes a little more metal so that the beginner can more easily touch an iron to it and get solder to flow to that connection. So there's quite a few innovations in our version that's for sale right now. Um, so in order to keep our customer base and, and see success, we have to build our community. And we do that through a variety of ways. And the first shot I have here is of our forum. And this is just kind of your standard online forum where people can come together and ask questions about the product, even share their new schematic or board layout, or share their project. Um, we have a, a very large tech support section of our company that's monitoring this forum and helping to answer the questions. But the, the users of the forum often help each other. And so it's, it's kind of the self-fulfilling tech support. Here's another shot of our uh, website here. This is the open log. Um, I won't go into too much detail about it, but I wanted to highlight that when you go down, if you scroll down the site, you'll often find a whole lot of commenting going on directly on our product page. And I just wanted to highlight this because it's, it's a really good method for our users to collaborate even and post issues that they have with the product. That has been a, a, bit, a good feedback loop for us at SparkFun, where if, if someone's having trouble with the product, they'll put it right there on the product page. And that's public facing, right? So anyone that's shopping for our open log is going to go, oh, OK, wow, a lot of people are having trouble with this. I'm not going to buy it. Or I'm going to post a question on there and say, why isn't this fixed yet? And it really holds us accountable to make sure our products are well supported and working well. And it often is a good place for people to suggest innovations and say, you know, I really wish this product had this particular feature. And we can respond quickly to that. So in addition to our forum, we also have the, uh, the comments section there. I just wanted to highlight a couple other events. I'm out of time here, but um, this is a, a robotics competition we host at our facility. And it's just a great way for all of our customers to come and hang out in person and 
share all their inventions. Um, this was a soldering competition we hosted where people came and really showed their chops on how well they can solder and how quickly they can solder. Um, there's me playing my electric guitar at Maker Fair in uh, San Diego or San Jose. So it's good to get out there and share your projects. Let's see what else. And we're always in the classroom. We're teaching tons of classes. So it all starts with the kids, right? Um, so I think that's all the time I have right now. Um, thank you so much. We share.